Hey, Brennan here. Um, it is Friday, the 30th of January. Um, this is kind of going to be a little bit of a scathing, scathing critique here. Um, something really pissed me off yesterday. It actually pissed off a lot of trans people. <sighs> and I think I'm just going to talk about it. Um, so Jill Soloway, the writer who um, created Transparent, um, posted a meme that somebody had sent her. Um, she was not the creator of this, um, but it was a mashup of um, the Kardashians and Transparent called the Transdashians, um, really poking fun at um, Bruce Jenner's gender identity and how much um, they have been at the center of um, kind of really transphobic um, media assumptions and media accusations that um, Bruce Jenner is transgender. Um, had Jill Soloway posted this meme that somebody sent her with like a fucking ounce of criticism, like this is not okay, um, this would be a non-issue, but she didn't. Um, she posted it with the caption, I couldn't not. If this is wrong, tell me to take it down and I will. Um, so it definitely had this very like, tee hee, I couldn't not share this. Um, like, you could, actually. You could have not shared that and spared a lot of trans people having to look at that. Because, you see, the thing when you're trans is, like, you have to look at this crap, like, all the time. And um, I know that I do this where I kind of tailor my social media and, like, where I am on the Internet to not run into those kinds of things because I deal with them every day. And to have it, honestly, on something that you assume to be a safe space and an allies Facebook page, have them put something like this, um, I couldn't not share this, like... You shouldn't have shared that. Um, so that happened. Um, people got really upset about it. Uh, she deleted the original post, um, relying on trans people to tell her that something was wrong, um, which is like, we're not here um, to be the referee of that. That's transphobic. Uh, we're often put in that position, and it makes a lot of us really uncomfortable um, to have to be the finger waggers constantly. Um, she then issued an apology saying it was a, like the most ridiculous apology I've ever seen. Um, I actually give Sarah Silverman a lot more credit for the apology that she issued after making a what if I got a sex change my life would be so easier video. Um, weird like feminist thing. Um, I don't know. But uh, Jill Songway said that she was sorry. She took it down and it was just weird to see her art appropriated that way. Um, appropriated was the exact word she used, which is painfully, laughably ironic to any trans person viewing that because she has literally appropriated our lives um, for her TV show, Transparent, uh, which is going to get me to a little bit of the issues that trans people have had with Transparent, which I haven't made a video at because I was kind of torn on those issues. But now, after getting a really good idea of how Jill Solid views the trans community, which is as her material and artistic medium, not as actual people, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it rip. So, the thing with, like, trans people and TVs and movies that, like, is the biggest problem for us is it's never us telling our own story, or even, very rarely us even playing trans people in movies. Um, Laverne Cox was the first trans woman to play a trans woman on, like, mainstream TV, and even in Orange is the New Black, she's become sort of a tertiary character who's like, defining characteristic is that she's transgender. Um, but then again, the show isn't about her. It's about women's prison. She's one of the characters. Um, that's cool. Uh, before that, we have a lot of trap jokes in 90s comedies. Pretty much any Jim Carrey movie, any 90s comedy had some joke where somebody was a transvestite and, like, you know, you, like, it's like in the punchline is you're supposed to be grossed out by this. You're supposed to find it disgusting. You're supposed to be angered by it, which is the reason a lot of trans women get fucking attacked and get killed when they, like, when their partner finds out that they're, like, not raised female born like it, it, it's like a whole mess so I mean I can't even like really talk about that because it's so fucking entry level and I don't even want to get into it but then throughout like the 2000s and stuff we have just have this trope of trans people being reduced to like prostitutes and sex workers and criminals and these really like socially unacceptable roles in society when in reality a lot of trans people have normal careers. A lot of transgender people are CEOs, are a lot, I mean, not a lot of them. I can think of one. Um, 
I mean, a lot of them are, are very accomplished in their careers, um, in their chosen careers, and that that's not fair. That doesn't represent who we are. Like, we're not all sex workers. We're not, we don't all have these tragic training narratives that you see in Dallas Buyers Club and Boys Don't Cry and, like, every single transgender show, like, and movie to date is a movie made by cis people that shows a transgender person suffering and dealing with hardship. Hardship that the cis people who created it will never understand because they are not living it and probably aren't going to live it. Like, Jill Soloway is a cis woman who wrote a show about, a, like, a family. It's not even really about Mora, which is, like, what I'm starting to realize the more I'm, like, listening to trans women who, like, are, you know, voicing their opinions about this show, um, is that the show isn't really about Mora or about her transition or about what she's going through. It's about how her transition and how she becomes an obstacle and conflict that informs the experiences of her family. Like, she is used as a plot device and as, like, a trope to define the other characters in the show, and that's not fair. Like, there, and this is what I, like, went off at my boyfriend about when I found this, like, shit on Facebook, is, like, to date, there has never been a movie or a TV show that is made like mainstream, like by trans people, featuring trans people, playing trans people that shows transgender people existing in a space and in a context without cis people. Like, we exist when you leave the room. Like, we're still trans when you leave the room. Like, and the thing that makes me the most mad about all this is because Jill Soloway ripped the apology from her Facebook. She's, like, silencing the many, like, dozens of trans people that came onto her Facebook being like, yo, this is wrong. Yo, your apology's wrong. Like, here's what you're doing wrong. Here's how we feel about it. And she just presses delete. And then everything that we have to say on the subject just disappears, like, even though, like, everybody still has proof that you posted the meme in the first place. You can't pretend like this doesn't happen or didn't happen. And this, that's what's going to happen is this is going to disappear and she's going to continue to be lauded as some sort of like doing great things to the trans community when she's not. There are so many like actual trans people who are working so hard in advocacy like positions who are actually changing the world for trans people. And like nobody knows their names. Like they all talk about Jill Soloway, about Jeffrey Tambor, who like admittedly did bring a lot of, like, beauty and sensitivity to a role that has been denigrated by so many cis men, like Jared Leto at the top of my fucking list right now. But, like, mm, it's so aggravating, because, like, I'm a writer, like, I'm an artist, and, like, when I try and tell cis people about, like, what I go through as a trans person, they're like, oh, you're exaggerating. You're seeking that out. No one really wants you dead. Like, you probably have to search really hard to find people who, like, don't like you that much. It's, like, they don't listen, and they would rather get the story from somebody who's never experienced it, who will go, at like, one second, dropping the names of our dead, like, dead teenagers that got bullied to death, using their name and, like, accepting an award in their name, and then going and being like, tee-hee, look at this trans woman, like, look at this funny joke someone sent me, I'm gonna share it to all my followers, even though they have enough of it every day. Like, I... Like, I can't, and I just, I just wanted to make this video just to show, like, how I feel about it as a trans person, and I, like, encourage other trans people to make videos about these things when they happen, because I am so sick and tired of people, like, who, like, pretend to be allies coming out of the work, woodwork, saying nasty stuff, getting called out, and, like, not, and, like, pretending like it never happened, and pretending that they could just go on and continue, like, People are talking on her Facebook about this community she has created. Like, you didn't invent the trans community. Like, the trans community exists out, uh, existed before Jill Soloway, existed before Transparent, existed before Laverne Cox. Like, it's so infuriating. And, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. I, like, went way off the rails, but, like, Go seek out something that's written by a trans person. Like, I'm going to try to on Gendered In and in my little networks really be blasting stuff that's written and created by trans people this week about um, about transness because I think that's the stuff you should be paying attention to, not not some cis person's idea of what our lives are like and what we go through because it's, it's bullshit. And I don't know, just um, Jill Solo is kind of a piece of shit. So, yeah, that, that's my post today. And um, have a great weekend.